Okay. Well, welcome everybody. It looks like uh, last count, we've got about 580 people online here. So that's that's very good turnout. Um, welcome to the Quality Loss Adjustment Program webinar. Uh, my name is Ron Haugen and I'm, I'm a farm management specialist with the NDSU Extension Service. And we work together with the North Dakota State FSA office to do these webinars. And uh, uh, associated with NDSU is, uh, is Miranda Meehan. Uh, she helps us out with, with our webinars. And also with FSA, we deal with uh, Lindsay Abertroff. Uh, she's the, she's the uh, communications uh, specialist there. And presenting, presenting today will be Lori Heinrich. And she's, uh, she's, uh, she's the expert on this quality loss adjustment program. She's got a lot of information to give you. And she's going to try uh, uh, and she's going to try uh, answer questions too as uh, uh, afterwards. And she's got a lot of information, and we're getting a lot of questions too. This is a, a new program, and she'll explain that all to you. Um, yeah, we would ask that you would use the Q and A uh, uh, for asking questions. And we don't know if we can get to all the questions, but we'll try. Miranda and I will kind of say, summarize questions if they're duplicates. And we'll try to get them. We have to. We, it sounds like we have a hard stop at twelve thirty that we need to finish up. So, uh, uh, so we'll just kind of play it by ear there and see how things go. And we do have a couple polling questions too that we would ha have you answer at the end. So, with that, uh, if there's not anything else that I had forgotten, uh, we will turn it over to to uh, Laura. Thank you, Ron, and we really appreciate NDSU assisting us in getting information um, out on the quality loss adjustment or adjustment program. So this PowerPoint will be available. Um, Miranda will put it up on the NDS web, NDSU website. So you guys will have um, the recording plus the, this PowerPoint to go back and review as we go through the program. As Ron said, I am Laura Heinrich. I work for the North Dakota Farm Service Agency in Fargo. Um, I'm a FAR program director and my program division handles um, ARC PLC, uh, disaster programs, um, non-insured assistance programs, and farm records. So today we're gonna talk about what the quality loss adjustment program is, um, who's eligible to apply and how to apply, and what the eligible crops are for forage use or non-forage use. Authority for this program is included under the additional Supplemental Appropriations for Disaster Relief Act of 2019, as it was amended um, by the Further Consolidation Appropriations Act of 2020. Um, regulations for the program um, can be found in 7 CFR Part 760 Subpart R. The goal of the program is to provide assistance for crop quality losses that were a consequence of hurricanes, excessive moisture, floods, qualifying drought, tornadoes, typhoons, volcanic activity, snowstorms, or wildfires occurring in calendar years 2018 and 2019. So this program was part of what we call WIP Plus. Um, many of you have probably applied for that program already. This is a separate program that's tied to that, those same funding bills and to those same disaster events. Um, the sign-up deadline for this program is March 5th, so that's quickly approaching. So if you have not contacted your county offices to apply, we encourage you to do so. Eligible crops include crops for which federal crop insurance is available or crops eligible um, for coverage in the non-insured assistance program or NAP. That's a program we run here at FSA, um, but we're also under the NAP program, we're excluding um, value loss crops, honey and maple sap. So those are not eligible under the quality loss adjustment program. Eligible crops um, must suffer a quality loss due to a qualifying disaster event. They must have also incurred a 5% or greater quality discount due to the qualifying disaster event. Um, if that crop is a forage crop, they'd have to incur a nutrient loss. These crops may have been sold, fed on the farm to livestock, or may be in storage at the time of application. Ineligible crops include crops not grown commercially, crops intended for grazing, crops not intended for harvest, subsequent crops that do not meet double cropping history, 
or provisions. In North Dakota, we don't have double cropping provisions. So um, subsequent crops are not eligible in North Dakota um, and volunteered crops are also not eligible. In addition, ineligible crops include prevent planting crops, first year seeding of forage crops, crops that were destroyed other than by an eligible cause of loss and immature group crops. So we mentioned that qualifying disaster event in the slides before. Um, this slide lists all the different qualifying disaster events. Um, drought, as long as it's in a D3 or D4 um, level, and we'll cover that in the next slide. Excessive moisture, flooding, hurricane, snowstorm, tornado, and then typhoon, volcanic activity, and wildfire. And then also the additional related conditions tied to those qualifying disaster events. So counties that are eligible would be D3 and D4 extreme drought designations, presidential emergency disaster declarated counties, or secretarial disaster designation counties in 2018 and 2019. For a listing of those eligible counties, you can go to farmers.gov slash quality dash loss. If your county is not listed there, you still may be eligible. The county committee will require you to provide evidence that your quality loss is due to one of those qualifying disaster events. So they'll request that you provide additional documentation, whether that may be um, news articles, weather data, um, something that shows that that qualifying disaster event did occur in your county if you were not, if your county was not designated as a presidential or sec secretarial disaster designation. So there's certain causes of loss that are not eligible. Um, losses that are not due to one of those qualifying disaster events are not eligible. Um, losses that occur after harvest or occurred in storage are not eligible. Um, any losses due to in, insect infestation, um, drifting herbicide, or failure to follow good farming practices are also not eligible. So to go through an example, we have a producer who suffered a quality loss on 10,000 bushels of corn for grain due to excessive moisture. The grain suffered additional quality losses prior to harvest from a subsequent hailstorm. In this scenario, all 10,000 bushels are eligible. So even though that hailstorm is not a qualifying disaster event, because the corn did um, experience a qualifying disaster event of excessive moisture, and then subsequently that same acreage or same crop incurred a loss on a hailstorm, we can look at all of those quality losses together um, when we determine payment. In this example, the producer suffered a quality loss on 10,000 bushels of corn for grain. Only 1,000 bushels were affected by a qualifying disaster event of excessive moisture. The remaining 9,000 bushels only suffered a loss for hail. Only the 1,000 bushels affected by the qualifying disaster event of excessive moisture would be eligible for the quality loss adjustment program. So in this scenario, that 9,000 bushels came from a separate area that was not affected by excessive moisture. So that, that 9,000 bushels came from acreage that was only affected by hail. That's why that 9,000 bushels is not eligible for the quality loss assistance program. An eligible producer for QLA is a US citizen or resident alien a partnership consisting solely of citizens of the United States or resident aliens, um, corporations, LLCs, or other or organizational structure organized under state law consisting solely of citizens or of the US or resident aliens. An eligible producer is also defined as a person or legal entity that is entitled to an ownership share or is at risk in the crop production and marketing associated with the agricultural production of crops on the farm. Applicants must be able to show with verifiable evidence that they have a valid ownership share and risk in the crop produced and that they have control of the crop acreage on which the commodity was grown at the time of the disaster.
Producers um, must also meet our adjusted gross income provisions. Um, a person or legal entity is ineligible for QLA program benefits if their adjusted gross income exceeds $900,000, unless at least 75% of their adjusted gross income is derived from farming, ran farming, ranching, or forestry activities. There's a $125,000 payment limitation for quality loss adjustment. Um, the limitation applies to each of the program years applied for 2018 and or 2019. This is a, is a separate um, payment limitation than WIP Plus. So if a producer received $125,000 under WIP Plus, they'd also be eligible for $125,000 under QLA. There is a linkage requirement for quality loss adjustment program. Um, as addition, as a condition um, for applying for benefits, producers are required to purchase crop insurance or obtain NAP coverage on the crop for the 2022 and 2023 crop years. The coverage must be purchased at 6,100 level or equivalent. Um, and linkage applies to all crops receiving a QLA payment. Producers who agreed to obtain crop insurance or NAP coverage for a crop um, in accordance with the requirements for WIP Plus are also considered to have met the requirements to purchase crop insurance or obtain NAP coverage for the Quality Loss Assistance Program. The, an exception to that 2022-2023 requirement would be is if a, if a producer obtained um, or received a payment for 2019 QLA um, and they purchased crop insurance in 2021 and 2022, they can request an exception for to utilize that 2021 and 2022 crop insurance purchase um, to meet linkage. The forms that apply to QLA are the FSA 898, which is the QLA program application. The 895, which is the crop insurance coverage agreement form. So that's that linkage requirement. The 899, which is the historical nutritional value weighted average worksheet, which is used for forage crops. You also need to have a CCC 902 on file, which is the farm operating plan for payment eligibility. The 941, which is your adjusted gross income certification. 942 if you need to um, certify that 75% of your income comes from farming and ranching. And 801026, which is the form that we have you certify that you're in compliance with highly erodible and wetland um, determinations. An acreage report must be on file with the Farm Service Agency. And then also, um, if you haven't worked with our agency we, before, we'd have you um, complete an AD 2106, which is a race, ethnicity, and gender form. And that is an optional form. You can apply for the program um, by accessing www.farmers.gov slash quality dash loss. And there is an application portal there where you can complete the application online. Um, or we suggest and strongly encourage you to contact your local service center locator and contact your local office for assistance. So QLA payments are broken into two different crop categories. We have crops intended for forage and crops other than forage. The first group we're gonna talk about is, when we get into more detail is, get, is the crops um, other than forage. But what quality discounts um, will we be looking at? Um, QLA will consider all quality discounts recognized by the industry. Quality discounts that are associated with the loss that could have been mitigated, such as high moisture or insect infestation, um, are not eligible. And the Farm Service Agency's county committees are responsible before determining whether a loss could have been mitigated or not. So an example here would be a producer's corn crop received a quality discount due to high moisture content. Um, would this producer be eligible for the QLA program? They would not. 
because if that's the only loss they had, losses due to high moisture um, for crops that could have been dried down, which um, are most of the crops in North Dakota, such as corn, soybeans, um, wheat, um, that could be dried down. Um, the losses due to high moisture are not eligible the because the producer could have mitigated that quality loss by using the best practices for drying and storing the crop. Vi vi verifiable documentation um, includes records of, that can be verified by FSA through an independent source or a third party. The records that will be used to substantiate the amount, the amount of quality loss, they must be dated and show final disposition um, and be seasonal or crop specific for the commodities produced more than once in a calendar year, which up here in the tundra, we don't have a lot of those. So that's the information you'll have to provide um, to verify your quality loss. Verifying quality loss for crops other than forage, the verifiable documentation must come from tests or analysis conducted within 30 days of harvest. There is an exception for grain crops that were sold. Um, verifiable documentation at the time of sale is acceptable as long as the as long as the county committee can determine that the crop was maintained using best management practices. For forage crops, we look at the nutritional value and forage quality tests or analysis of nutritional value must have been completed within 30 days of harvest. Um, quality losses for hay and forage crops must be documented with an analysis from either of the following, um, state university laboratory, or other laboratories approved by state FSA committee. Um, the NDSU does not do um, nutrient value tests. So the if you are applying for um, a forage crop and have those nutrient value tests, we wanna make sure you're in contact with your county office and then the state committee will review them to see if they are eligible. So under QLA, payments will be based on, on the producer's loss for crops other than forage. If the producer can provide documentation of the grading factors, such as the low test weight or broken kernels, and also a total dollar value loss, which we'll explain as we go through the rest of this presentation. Payments will be based on the producer's loss for forage crops if the nutrient value for the year of application can be provided and also the nutrient values for three prior years. So here, um, for an example of using a producer's loss, we have a producer sold 10,000 bushels of corn. The settlement sheet shows the producer received a reduced price of $2 per bushel due to a low test weight. The producer's verifiable evidence shows both a quality loss which so we documented on the settlement sheet that there was low test weight and a total dollar value loss of $20,000, which would be that discounted price of $2 times the 10,000 bushels. So if both of those are documented on that settlement sheet, then the producer could use or would receive a payment um, for QLA based on their loss. If the producer doesn't have those verifiable documentation. Um, the payment will be based on the county average. For crops other than forage, that producer would still need to provide verifiable documentation of the grading factors, but they wouldn't have that total dollar value loss. So maybe they fed it um, or it's still in storage. So they didn't have a total dollar value loss that they could provide documentation for. In those situations, then we'll pay based on a county average. For the forage crops, if the producer can only provide a nutrient value um, documentation for the year of application, but didn't have those previous three years of documentation, then the producer will be paid. They're still eligible, but they'd be paid based on a county average. And we'll go through some payment examples as we get further into this presentation. So an example of this would be a producer delivered 10,000 bushels of corn. 
Um, they have scale tickets to show the corn had a quality discount due to broken kernels. So they ran it over the scale and had um, documentation that it had broken kernels, but the producer decided not to sell it um, and stored it um, for feed. The producer has that verifiable evidence um, showing a quality loss, but then they don't have that total dollar value loss to, um, to be able to use their own producer loss. So they're gonna be paid based on the county average. So now we'll get to, into more detail on non-forage crops. So these crops will include all crops not intended for forage or any crop with an intended use other than forage. <clears throat> Producers must have suffered a loss due to the quality with verifiable grading factors directly related to that qualifying disaster event. Affected production is the producer's ownership share of harvested production adjusted to standard moisture for an eligible crop that experienced both the quality loss due to the qualifying disaster event so that's our snowstorm, um, excessive moisture, flooding, and have at least a 5% quality loss due to all eligible disaster events combined. Um, the affected production must have suffered a loss due to the quality or due to quality and have verifiable quality factors. So again, we always need at a minimum to have those grading factors. Um, documentation of that needs to be provided um, with the application. The other thing I want to touch on on this slide is we talk about the ownership, the producer's ownership share of the harvested production. So if um, if I share um, in the crop with my husband 50-50, so I, um, I have 50% of the crop, my husband has 50% of the crop. When we file our applications, we're not going to put 100% of the crop on each application with a 50% share. That's not how this application um, is designed. This application, we need to put 50% on Laura's application and 50% on my husband's application. So we need to, to reduce the, the bushels on the application needs to be reduced for our, and include just our share of the crop. Verifiable documentation records include sales receipts from buyers, settlement sheets, trucker warehouse scale tickets, actual measurements or appraisals by FSA or RMA, um, loss adjusters or other USDA employees if they're performing their work duties. Um, other um, documentation records may come from feed company representatives um, who did a measurement or a state committee approved consultant. The quantity of affected production claimed on the application must be supported with non-verifiable records um, of production, which may include copies of receipts, ledgers of income, income statements of deposit slips, um, cash register tapes, invoices from custom harvesting, um, you pick records. So to help support that quantity that you're putting on the application, if you don't have a, a sales document or you don't have a measurement service completed, you could use what we call con contemporaneous records, or it may consist of feed records um, if you fed the crop, um, something to substantiate the quantity of affected production that you're certifying to on the application. Producers that suffered a quality loss will fall into two categories regarding verifiable documentation. If they have verifiable documentation um, for grading factors and a total dollar value loss, um, their payment will be based on their own individual loss. If they have verifiable documentation for the grading factors, but no total dollar value loss value documentation, um, the amount they receive will be discounted and it will be based on a county average. So let's go through some payment examples. Um, so Lucy certifies to 100,000 bushels of affected corn due to drought in 2019. The corn, cr corn price before discount is $4 a bushel. The discounted price received was $3 a bushel due to low test weight. So there is a dollar discount. 
Therefore, Lucy's total dollar value loss amount is $100,000 calculated as follows. So the 100,000 bushels times the $4, which was the price before discount, gives us $400,000. And then we subtract um, what she actually received. So the $100,000 times the $3 per bushel, which is $300,000. So 400,000 minus 300,000 is $100,000 of loss. Payment will be based on the producer's loss if verifiable documentation um, has both grading factors and the total value, value loss. So Lucy's documentation shows um, the grading factors, plus it showed the $4 that she would have received and shows the dollar discount that she received for the net price of $3 per bushel. So if her documentation shows all of this, she's gonna be paid on her loss times 70%. So to calculate Miss Lucy's payment, we would multiply her total dollar value loss by 70%. So the $100,000 times 70% to get into QLA program payment of $70,000. This payment may be reduced further if we don't have sufficient funds. So there may be an additional factor. Payments for non-forage crops without a total dollar value loss are determined using the following calculation. We'll have the total affected production multiplied by the county weighted average dollar, county weighted average dollar value uh, on affected production. That'll give us our loss amount. Once we figure that loss amount, we multiply that by 70% factor, and then it'll be multiplied by an additional 50% factor. So in this scenario, this is where our producer um, had a had taken um, the crop in and had it tested. And so they have that verifiable quality factors, but then they have it either stored at home or they fed it. So in this scenario, we're gonna apply that additional factor and use a county weighted average dollar value. So the example is producer Jimmy had 80 acres of wheat that yielded 65 bushels per acre for a total of 5,200 bushels of Durham wheat. He certified that he had 1,200 bushels that had a quality loss due to falling numbers that was due to an eligible weather event. So in this scenario, um, Jimmy had a portion of his crop that was taken off. Um, he'd already harvested, had no quality discounts, before the rain started. So he only has 1,200 bushels out of the 5,200 bushels that were affected. So that's what he's applying for for QLA. He also certified that he had a wheat, the wheat sampled and tested for quality, and he has the verifiable documentation to support the quality loss. However, Jimmy did not have a price before the discount um, for the crop. So after sign up ended, it was determined that the average dollar value loss on effective production for Durham wheat intended for grain conventionally grown um, was $1.10. This was based on the applications filed with crops sold with verifiable total dollar value loss. So this, that dollar amount will not be determined until after sign up is completed. Um, FSA will go and look at all of the applications for Durham wheat in that county. Um, and then they will determine what the average um, dollar value loss was for Durham wheat in, in that specific county. It was further determined that price for Durham wheat intended for grain conventionally grown was $6. So that's our price before discount. This was based on a weighted average of applications filed with crops sold with verifiable total dollar value loss. So again, after sign up, we're gonna look for what that, the loss amount was and what that price before discount was. The dollar 10 divided by our $6 results in a calculated percentage of loss of 18.33%. So because the loss was calculated for that county at 18.33%, which is greater than our 5% threshold, Jimmy qualifies for the following payment. He had 1,200 bushels that were affected. We multiply that by the $1.10 average dollar value loss of affected production that's determined by FSA to get our loss amount of $1,320.
they, we then apply the 70% payment factor plus the additional 50% payment factor gives us a total gross payment of $462. And again, that $462 may need to be factored um, after sign up if we don't have, if there aren't funds available um, to be able to pay out all the, the um, payments at 100%. So now we're gonna go into um, a couple examples of what kind of documentation um, producers may obtain and how they would complete the application. So um, McDonald Farm and Transport Inc. Um, has sold 1,882.7 bushels of wheat for grain. Um, 1,082.84 bushels had a quality loss due to falling numbers, protein, and vomitoxin due to excessive moisture that occurred between May 1st and September 30th, 2019. McDonald Farm and Transport Inc. also had 1,500 bushels in storage. They certified that these bushels also have quality losses due to falling numbers, protein, and vomitoxin resulting from excessive moisture. So in this scenario, um, because that producer had sold crop that had the verifiable quality factors um, determined and they can provide documentation of that, they can say that the quality of the crop that's still in the bin um, is the same as what was sold and therefore they're going to apply for the 1500 bushels um, using the sold production quality factors. So here's an example of the assembly sheet that the producer will provide with their application. So it shows our net bushels um, of 243.34 for the first load. It has our price before discount of $5.05. And then it's showing our discounted price <clears throat> for each um, type of uh, quality factor. So it has our protein discount, our falling number discount, and our vomit toxin discount. So if we total those three up, we get $1.36. So we have our 243.34 bushels times the $1.36 discount gives us our total dollar value loss for that load of $330.94. The next load also has our net bushels, um, our price before um, discount of 505. Again, we have our discounts are the same for both loads, so $1.36. So we're going to take our 839.5 net bushels for the second load times the $1.36 gives us $1,141.72. The third load was not quality affected, so it wouldn't be included on the application. So this example is for Minnesota County. Um, so we're going to put our recording state and county Again, only one application um, is filed for the producer for all of their land in, in every state and county in the US. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you're only filing one application that'll include all of your counties. And you're gonna put your recording county or your control county in items one and two, and then your crop year in item three that you're applying on. Um, part A is just the, what you're certifying to, so you want to read through that. Um, and then Part B is where you put in the producer's name and address. So this producer had both um, crops other than forage with a total dollar value loss and crops other than forage without the total dollar value loss. So they're going to complete parts D and parts E of the FSA 898. In item 22, you're putting in the physical location of where that crop was grown. So it's not the administrative county that you deal with at FSA, it's where that crop is physically grown is what you're going to list in item 22. You'll put in your crop and crop type in 23 and 24 the intended use in item 25, and then the organic stat status in item 26. You'll put in your qualifying disaster event. In this example, it's excessive moisture, and then the dates of the, that disaster event. 
So this producer is saying the disaster event was from May 1st to September 30th of 2019. Enter in the unit of measure in item 30, and then our total affected production in item 31. So those are our two loads combined. We're gonna put in our type of quality loss in item 32, which we're showing our protein, our falling numbers and our vomitoxin. And then we'll enter in our total dollar value loss in item 33. And then our price before discount, the 505 in item 34. For our 1500 bushels that were still stored that we had our verifiable grading factors for, but we didn't haven't sold yet, so we couldn't um, include those in part D. We enter that in part E. We're gonna enter in the first, same information um, for our physical location, our crop, crop type, intended use, organic status, disaster events and dates. Um, 46 will be their unit of measure. Our total affected production is 1500. And then our type of quality loss discount will be entered in for item 48. Again, there's no um, total dollar value loss or price before discount that the producer certifies in Part E because that's the determination that'll make, be made by the Farm Service Agency after sign up has completed. And then in Part F is where the producer will sign and date. Another example, Farmer Joe has sold 19,546.43 bushels of corn for grain. Um, all 19,000 bushels have a quality loss due to test weight and broken kernel foreign matter um, due to excessive moisture that occurred between January 1st, 2019 and December 31st. So in this example, the producer is providing a settlement sheet. It has our total net bushels listed on it. It has our price before discount. Again, there's three assembly sheets that are included on this settlement, and it gives us our weighted average of all three assembly sheets of the three, 3.1097 cents per bushel. It has our total test weight and foreign broken kernel foreign matter um, reductions. So those are totaled for all three assembly sheets on this one settlement sheet. And then on the bottom, it's also showing what our quality factors was. So it has our, our net units. It has what our test weight um, actually came in at for each assembly sheet. And then it also shows what our broken kernel foreign matter. So in this scenario, um, again, this is the producer would put their recording state and county. This is in North Dakota. So we have North Dakota in item one in our county in item two for 2019 this is the crop year in item three. Producer's name and address goes in part B. We'll complete the application with the physical location in item 22, our crop type and intended use in 23 through 25, along with our organic status in 26, disaster events and dates in 27 through 29, unit of measure in 30, our total affected production. So we're including all of the bushels were quality affected on the settlement sheet. So we're including the total affected production of 19,546.43. We're putting our type of quality loss discount in item 32 of test weight and broken kernel foreign matter. And then um, total dollar value loss of affected production. Um, 4,566.08, so that's the total of the test weight discounts and the broken kernel foreign matter. And then the price before discount, again, that was the weighted on the settlement sheet of all three assembly sheets of $3, $3.1097 per bushel. The producer will sign and date. Um, in item 52A and 52C. So that's um, our non-forage crops. The next section we'll get into um, is forage crops, which is based on nutritional value. Um, forage quality tests or analysis of nutritional value must have been completed within 30 days of harvest. Um, 
again with this and if you under the non um, forage crops if you have crops that were tested outside that 30 um, calendar days we want you to contact your county office um, to see if it is acceptable or not but the general rule is that those tests need to be within 30 days quality losses for hay and forage crops must be documented with an analysis from either a the state university, um, if the, the state university conducts those types of tests or other laboratories that are approved by the um, state FSA committee. Forage crops will be broken into high and low nutritional value categories based on the expected quality for the timing of the harvest within the crop year. So basically when we talk about high and low quality, that's based on the number the cuttings. So which if the cutting would be determined to be low nutritional value or high nutritional value. Um, and that is a producer certification of whether the, that cutting or that production would be considered high or low nutritional value. So producer Summerall routinely harvests five cuttings of alfalfa each year. The first and last cuttings are generally lower in quality, while the second, third, and fourth cuttings are higher in quality. So this obviously is an example of, of hay production that's further south than North Dakota. Um, most of the time we may, we probably get three cuttings at the best. Um, so if that first cutting is the cutting that would be termed low quality, and then the second and third would be high, high quality, that's how the producer should certify that um, production on the application. Um, producer Summerall suffered a loss due to drought in 2018 at a time that a fourth cutting would typically be harvested. Summerall would use the representative laboratory analysis for the third, second, third, and fourth cuttings to determine the nutritional values as high nutritional category. A producer must have four years of nutritional value values representing either high or low nutritional value categories and one for the year of application, which is one for the year of application and three historical years. In addition to that, they must also provide both production and historical nutritional value of the specific crop type intended use and organic status on the FSA 899. So if the producer is applying on um, historical nutritional They'll have two forms. They'll have the FSA 899 in addition to the FSA 898. The three years of historical value will be broken into high and low nutritional value categories to be placed on the FSA 899. The producer will, be, will submit historical nutritional values that are representative of the application year based on the timing and number of harvests within the year. If you only harvest one time a year, so you only do one cutting, that would be determined as high nutritional value. So producer Lowe submitted an application for 2018 due to drought in an eligible county. Lowe will provide verifiable documentation of nutritional values and acceptable documentation of production for 2015, 16, and 17 to calculate the weighted average historical um, nutritional value. And then also we'll provide the 2018 verifiable documentation for the application year nutritional value and acceptable documentation of the affected production for 2018. So how will we calculate the payments um, for forage crops? Uh, QLA payments will be equal to the total affected production times the verifiable percent loss, times the average market price, times 0.7. So that's if they have the historical nutritional values. That average market price is a price that's determined by um, the state FSA committee um, and is applicable. They set that price per county and per type of forage. Again, that payment may be further reduced if there's not sufficient funds available. So our example um, for a payment would be producer Jordan had 800 acres of alfalfa. 
that yielded four tons per acre for a total of 3,200 tons of hay. Jordan certified 800 tons of alfalfa that had a quality loss due to excessive moisture occurring from June 1st, 2019 through August 31st that was fed to livestock. Jordan produces high quality alfalfa hay and tests for quality annually. Jordan completed the historical nutritional value weighted average worksheet, the FSA 898 for years 16 through 18 to find his weighted historical nutrition, nutritional value of 116. And then Jordan certified that in 2019, there are verifiable documentation that supported an application year nutritional value of 80. So Jordan's calculated verifiable percentage nutritional loss was determined to be 31.03%. So one minus 80 divided by the 116. So the 116 was our historical average, 80 was the current. Because Jordan's loss was 31%, at least met that met or that was above the 5% threshold, therefore he qualifies for payment. So to calculate the payment, we take the 800 tons times the 31.03%. We multiply that by the $125, which is determined price for the commodity, equals a payment of $31,030. We multiply that by the 70% payment factor for a gross payment of $21,721. And again, that $21,000 may be factored further if there's not adequate funding available at, after sign up. So for forage crops with only an application year nutritional value, the county average percent of loss for each crop type intended use and organic status and nutritional category will be computed after all applications within the county have been submitted and reviewed, and an additional reduction of 50% will be applied to the producer's benefit. So in that scenario, if they only have the current year um, quality loss and not the historical, to calculate the payment, we'll take the total affected production times the county average percent loss times the average market price times 0.7 times 0.5. So this example is producer Jody had 800 acres of a legume grass mix forage, which was conventionally grown, that yielded four tons per acre for a total of 3,200 tons. Jody certified that 400 tons of the mixed forage had a quality loss due to excessive moisture. Jody had a quality test done on the 400 tons and had, and had produced hay in the prior years, but was unable to provide a verifiable forage test for the historical years. After signup was complete, it was determined that the weighted average percent of loss for legume grass mixed forage conventionally grown for forage in the high tier nutritional category was 25%. Um, since this is greater than a 5% loss, Jody qualifies for the following payment. We'll take the 400 tons that Jody certifying were quality affected that he could provide his quality test for. We take the 400 tons times 25%. That was the county average that was determined. Take that times $90, which is the price for his mixed forage. So 400 times 25% times $90 is $9,000 loss amount. We take that times the 70% payment factor times the 50% pay payment factor for a total of $3,150 gross estimated payment. Again, that gross estimated payment may be reduced further if we don't have funds available. So here's an example of completing an application. Um, we're using an example out of Texas because we haven't received one um, in North Dakota um, yet. So Sue submits an application for 2018 due to drought in an eligible county. Sue provides verifiable documentation of nutritional value and acceptable documentation of production for 15, 16, and 17 um, to calculate the weighted average historical nutritional value. 
2018 verifiable documentation for the application year, nutritional value, and acceptable documentation um, of effective production was also um, supplied. So here's some um, here's some examples of what they provided for per production or for quality um, evidence. So this is from a forage testing lab from Dairy One. It shows a relative feed value of 41. This is our, let's go back a screen here. So here it shows our 2000, this is for 2018. So we have 41 for 2018. For 2015, we have 74. 16, we have 73. 17, we have 83. So we'll complete our FSA 899 to show our production for each year. We're in our high tier. And our historical tests show 74 for year 15. For year 16, it's a nutritional value of 73. And 17, it's 83. So we enter that information on the application. We'll conf compute our weighted average it comes out to a 77.57 historical average nutritional value. We then need to take that information and complete our FSA 898 QLA application. Again, we'll put the physical location in item six where the crop was produced. We'll put our type of crop. So this is mixed forage IGS intended for forage conventional. Items 11 through 13 will be our disaster event and dates. We'll put our unit of measure. So again, we had the 64 was our nutritional value for 2018. Our category is high tier. The current verifiable nutritional value um, of 41. And then our historical is 77.57. So our effective production was 64 tons. Our current nutritional value for 2018 was 41. I think I said that wrong before, I apologize. And then our historical verifiable nutritional value, which we got from our, um, our other form is 77.57. Is so that's how we'll complete it for um, forage crops. So again, um, we visited about this at the beginning, but just how do I apply? You're gonna do one application for the entire operation nationwide in the recording or your control county office. The application includes all eligible crops suffering a quality loss. So you can in include more than one crop on the application. Um, the losses sustained in more than one crop year require a separate application for each crop year. So if you're applying for 2018 and 2019, you'd have two separate applications. If you're, if you're brand new um, with working with FSA, that's not a problem at all. We want you to contact your local county office. There's a link at the bottom, the last bullet of this slide um, for contact information to get a hold of your local office. They'll ask you for your name and address, some personal information, including your tax ID number, um, your farm operating structure, um, You'll have to complete forms for your adjusted gross income and other certifications. Um, they'll ask if you'd like to um, have your payment direct deposited and collect that information from you. And then if you don't have an acreage report on file, they'll have you complete an acreage report for the quality loss assistance program. Again, you can find the application itself that we covered, um, the 877 um, on our farmers.gov website slash quality dash loss. We also have a nationwide customer call center. Um, if you, we encourage you to contact your local office, but you can also call this customer call center. Um, their operating hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. 
and that um, person who answers the phone will assist you one on one on completing the application um, or directing you to your applicable county office. So after you um, submit your application, you have 14 days from signing the application to submit all the verifiable documentation to support your quality loss. So we encourage you to submit it all at the same time, but if for some reason you needed to get additional documentation, you do have 14 days from signing the application to submit it. You also have 60 days to submit any of those remaining um, producer eligibility forms, such as your adjusted gross income or your wetland um, highly rotable certification. QLA payments will not be um, issued to producers until after the application period ends on March 5th, because we have to go through the process of determining those county averages for those producers who didn't have um, total dollar value loss documentation. If the total amount of needed QLA payments exceeds the amount of funding available, we will do that additional factor as discussed throughout the presentation. Um, if, for any additional information on the program, you can visit farmers.gov slash quality dash loss. We also encourage you to sign up for Gov Delivery. Um, this slide just has how you can um, do a text message to get that information. So with that, I think we're ready for questions, Miranda and Ron. Well, we have a lot of questions, um, <laughs> that is for sure. We'll try to get it uh, kind of summarized. Uh, Miranda just sent out a poll here and then okay. we'll, we'll have you answer that first. <clears throat> and we can start going through questions while you guys are answering the poll since we have a lot of them to go through. Okay. Um, I'll just kind of uh, pick and choose here. Uh, uh, the, uh, first of all, the, there's been questions on WIP and QLA. Um, is there going to be a second? This the, is good. Is there going to be another uh, fifty percent on the WIP payment? The other fifty percent? Sure, that's a great question. Um, because the funding of the two programs are tied together, um, it's one pot of money. Um, they can't make that decision on whether to pay the other 50% of 2019 for WIP Plus until we've completed um, the QLA program. Okay. And then they'll make a determination on the 2019. And we're getting several questions here dealing with uh, the 5% threshold. Uh, what, what, how, do you act, how do you determine the 5%, I guess? Could you maybe run through that again? The 5% is based on, on the total dollar value loss. So that's how the, we're going to determine whether there's a 5% loss or not. So we take the, the price before discount um, times the quantity affected to get the total value of the crop. And then we divide the total dollar value loss by the total value of the crop to determine the 5%. And that's just on the affected affected uh, production, not on the, the non-affected. That's on the affected production that the producer um, enters onto the application. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Um, people are wondering about uh, the, 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 the payments for silage and earlage. Um, is that what determined by the county then, county committee? <laughs> So when we're talking silage and earlage, are we saying that that's what the crop was intended to be harvested for? I guess the question doesn't say, I guess, but. Okay. Um, that would be under, I mean, if it's intended for silage, that's gonna be under the forage crops because that's yeah. intended for, for forage. So they'd have to have the quality losses and they, or quality, um, the nutrient tests for the, for the silage and apply under the forage portion. Okay, there's a question of uh, somebody was using a hedge price uh, to hedge their crop. Uh, do you use you do you use that that price or the market price when you determine the price? The price for before discount will be what 
is shown on the settlement sheet. Okay. So I guess I'm so if they're using a hedge, Ron, I'm I'm what's I'm guessing that's not showing up on the settlement sheet. That's a separate right. Is that how you're taking that, Ron? That's a yeah. that would be something separate outside. We just look at what's on that settlement sheet. Yeah. And 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 with all of these specific situations and individual questions, um, just just run it by your local FSA office, and if they can't answer answer at the state office, we'll try and answer it. Because some of this stuff, some of these questions, of course, there's a lot of things behind the scenes too. So we're trying to answer the the best we can here with the limited amount of time. Um, exactly. Um, on corn, then, uh, if the test weight was low and no, and they couldn't find a buyer, so it was it was fed. Uh, then what happens? they'd have to have verifiable documentation of what that test weight was. So if that crop was insured and your crop insurance um, company came out and adjusted it, so the loss adjuster came out and they took a sample and got that sample tested and it showed that low test weight of 47, 48 pounds. Um, if you have that verifiable documentation of what the test weight was, you can use that um, you are going to be subject because you didn't sell it. Um, you are going to be subject to that additional 50% factor. Uh, there's a question about uh, the, the webinar that we are having today. It is being recorded. And if somebody, if somebody didn't get to watch it, where will it be posted, Miranda? I, that is, I put that link in the chat box. It should be the same place you guys registered for the webinar. It'll be posted there, hopefully by tomorrow. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, another question dealing with the 5% quality loss eligibility. If they hauled a 10 loads of 2019 corn into the elevator in February of 2020, is o that's over 30 days, then would you need county uh, committee approval there? If the production is sold, the county committee can accept the quality determined when it is sold. As sold. long as the crop was maintained in the bin under good farming practices. Right. Let's pull out of the way. Uh, there's a question about net or gross quantities. I would assume it would be gross quantities, right? It it's going to be net. You're using your oh, net bushels oh. off, yeah, because we we want to take off that shrink. So oh, we're going to use you. net bushels. Yep. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Uh, let me see. My, my, every time I'm trying to read a question, they add some more questions and it moves, <laughs> moves down on me here. <laughs> well, they're asking great questions. That's, yeah. This is yeah. good conversation. What about on corn, uh, a discount for uh, sour? Does that count? Um, discount for sour. The producer would have to, I mean, if they're certifying that it's due to the qualifying disaster event. So is it did the sour um, quality come from while it was still in the field due to the qualifying disaster event of, I'm assuming, excessive moisture? Um, if it is, then they could they could include it on their application. If it's something that happened in the bin after it was harvested, then no, it's not eligible. Okay. So there's quite a few questions on things that were on harvested because of the conditions and if those things are eligible. Know, what be it wheat or corn if it was left in the field and not harvested if the crop is not harvested it's not eligible for the quality loss assistance program because those losses were paid under the WIP plus program those production that's considered a production loss and that would have been um, handled under the WIP plus application right here, uh, here's kind of a long question. I'll just actually read it here. I had I had 2019 corn stored on the farm. When I started delivering, I had uh, foreign matter discounts. I bought a screener and screened the remaining. I delivered and screened corn to the the screen corn to the elevator with no discounts, and delivered the screenings to a, a local feedlot. Um, I got about 50, 60 percent of the price. Uh, what uh, what do you have to say about that? At this time, we it needs to show, we need to look at how that crop was sold. And so if there is no discounts when the crop was sold, it is not eligible. 
Uh, here's, uh, I think I know the answer to this, but I'll run it by you anyway. If you have, let's say you have 25 different settlements with different prices, how do you fill, fill out the dollar value? I'm assuming you would use a weighted average. At this time, you there's, I know there's only four lines on the application. Um, so you would, there is a continuation sheet that you can download and put additional lines of data on. Um, so we want you, you enter it if it's different per settlement sheet. If you have different prices per settlement sheet, you'd enter each settlement sheet on there. We are trying to work through if there could possibly be a um, document that NDSU could assist producers in um, and coming up with a weighted average price of all those settlement sheets. Um, we're working on that, but at this time it's not available. So um, you can still complete the application um, using that the original application plus the continuation sheets to list each 20, I think you said 25, 25 SM, um, so. Okay. Uh, what, qual what qualifies for a, a quality loss in, I don't know, it moved on me again. What uh, for in dry beans, uh, pick, uh, pick, crack, seed, coat, splits, whatever. We do we do look at industry industry standards is what we look at for quality factors. Um, we haven't I have not seen a lot of um, production evidence for um, dry beans yet to go through those different quality factors. Um, but we can if that producer um, wants to email me my email address is at the beginning of this presentation. Um, we can take a look at that and and help them do the application. Okay, here's a question on the linkage for purchasing crop insurance coverage in future years. Someone that's retired uh, at the end of 2020 and would not intend on buying it crop insurance anymore, uh, then what? There are exceptions if the producer um, is no longer farming. Um, they can contact their local county office and describe their scenario. Um, and, and the county office can look up um, in the handbook what provisions are available. Um, for linkage for that producer. So I encourage them to contact their local office and visit with them about that. Okay, um, here's another long question. Uh, well, we're getting a few barley questions here. Uh, this person has a barley contract for 480. It reads that uh, vomitoxin, you must must be below the 1% or uh, for no discount. From one to two, there's a 0.25 discount and, and et cetera. When the load is rejected and there's no record of the load recorded, then the, the then the load was taken to a non-human consumption market and sold for a lesser price. Um, uh, the only paperwork to uh, to uh, to verify the original malt contract was the proof that the contract was not filled. Um, what do you think about that? Right, um, we are working through some of those issues um, at this time. Um, because the, the assembly sheet for the feed barley does not show that starting price um, of the malting barley contract, um, it, it's not eligible under the provisions the where they are right now. Um, so what we would encourage producers to do um, is still get your documentation put together. Um, we are working with the national office to see and with the barley industry to see if there's anything we can do with this scenario. Um, but we encourage the, those producers to get their documentation together. So we'd want them to get their contract, um, the rejection letter, um, which would show their quality discounts because we need to make sure we have those quality discounts documented and then the feed price that they sold it for. Um, and make sure they have that documentation ready. And then um, as soon as we get information from our national office, we'll share that with our county offices on whether they can accept that documentation or not. Okay, Here, here's a question. Uh, harvested uh, 100,000 bushels, 25,000 bushels were hauled in and, you, and they had a quality loss in dollars on the assembly sheet. The other 75,000 still in the bin, it has been measured and, and, uh, and, and, qual and, qual and quality determined by the crop insurance company. Does the 75,000 bushels go uh, uh, to the county average at 50% payment? Yes, it would. Okay. 
Uh, okay, what about wheat that is not marketable and still in storage due to high irrigate? Okay, if the producer is, is stating that irrigate is caused by one of our qualifying disaster events, then they could apply on that. They'd have to have verification of the irrigate, you know, so they'd have to have had it tested and have verifiable documentation of that. They could certify to that quantity that's affected since it hasn't been sold to be subject to that additional 50% and based on county average loss. Yeah. Okay, this person sold 50,000 bushels of corn uh, before the discount, was, the price was 350. After the discount, it was 332. Uh, do they submit an application on the average of the 50,000 bushels or, or every load? The loads had a range of zero to 44 cents per bushel discount. They should only be including those bushels that were affected. Okay. So the, if they had no quality effect, if they had some loads that were not quality affected, they should be excluded from the application. But if there's any type of quality um, discount that was on a load, um, it should be included in the application. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, here's a person that the, the elevator rejected some of the wheat and another elevator accepted it, I guess. Uh, um, and then I guess I'm not sure what the question is there. Uh, I guess that's, uh, I guess if they accepted it, may, if they paid a feed wheat price, then, then there's a situation where you don't have the price, the market price again. So. Right, and that would be similar to what we're saying for barley. And we know we have um, feed wheat issues also where you held it to the elevator, they wouldn't purchase it as um, grade one milling wheat um, and ended up purchasing it for feed wheat. In that scenario, again, because your documentation um, that you received only shows the price before discount is gonna be that feed wheat price. And so it's not gonna show that you had met a 5% loss. Um, again, we are working with the national office and that scenario on what producers can provide to possibly be eligible for the program. So in, with feed wheat, we want that producer to make sure that they have um, you know, start getting, getting your documentation put together. Um, they can look at, make sure that there's quality discounts documented on um, the assembly sheet or settlement sheet that was sold for feed. Um, if not, then they may wanna talk to their elevator and, and see um, if they can get some type of document of what the quality of their wheat was um, as to why it was not basically rejected and, and purchased for feed. Um, the other thing they'd be looking at is what was the price for grade one milling wheat or board price for wheat on the date that it was purchased for feed. They could get some of that documentation put together. Again, we can't assure that it's going to be eligible for the program, but we are working for our national with our national office on it. And um, you know, this is a good time for producers to you have a little bit more time in the winter before you start getting busy here with calving and and planting and it's going to be here sooner than than I think I'm ready for it. But anyways, it, it, this kind of quiet time right now, we want you to try to get all your documentation put together. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to come up with a solution and, and see if they're eligible for the program. Uh, here's a, a question just to clarify, there's no compensation for increased dryer costs uh, because this person had 30% more dryer costs because of the wet wet corn, I assume. No, there's not. Okay. Uh, if a producer has 30 different assembly sheets, uh, there again, I think you answered this one. Uh, then uh, does, it, uh, does the producer average the discounts uh, and, and, and put it all on one application? You, you advise to use the continuation sheet, right? Correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. If you have, I think, uh, I think I know the answer to this one too. If you had corn quality loss due to damage after storage, uh, I guess I'm not sure what that, that means evidently it got damaged while in storage. Uh, that would not qualify, right? Correct. Okay. And so, okay, 
this one here, do I understand correctly? Um, do I only include bushels of the crop, the loads that show a 5% quality loss reduction? It should be, you're gonna include any production any. that was quality affected. Yep. So it could be anywhere from 0.1% to 30%, but right. it has to have some type of quality loss and then you're gonna include it. And then we look at all of the affected production that you put on your application to determine if you're eligible, all the production that you put on your application has to average that 5% loss. Yeah. If you had crop insurance measure and grade your production, that's verifiable documentation, correct? You would need the document from the loss adjuster that shows what the quality of that crop was. So whatever they included in their loss adjustment file, where it shows the quality, like they took it to the elevator or wherever they sent it to, to get tested, you need that documentation to provide to us. So if you had a, let's say you had a production loss uh, uh, for crop insurance and they, and they used quality factors to adjust your loss, those factors that they used are still, are, could be the same factors for this program, is that correct? I guess the word factor I'm, I'm pausing on a little bit when I, we want that documentation that shows the test weight was this, the broken kernel corn matter was this, or if falling number was this, vomitoxin was this. We need that document, not, not the loss adjusters worksheet. We need the document itself where they had sent it in and got it back to know what those grading factors were. Okay. Uh. Uh, maybe Miranda, you could answer this too. Uh, that will the extension forage uh, quality formula be a variable, verifiable source? I don't. Uh, so we I, don't I have, have a lab. We here. don't have. We don't have a formula now, do we? Or do we? No, we don't have a forage lab here. I mean, and there, according to our discussion yesterday with Laura, <laughs> is that you need it. It needs to be tested from a lab. So there is a list of labs. I sent that to Laura, um, but it has to be a certified forage lab. Um, I know there's a couple other questions maybe Laura could expand on related to this is if you're looking for relative feed value or TDN in that quality. And then, and then also, since there's not a lot of folks in the state that produce, or a lot of forage producers in terms of alfalfa in an area, would you use a state average instead of a county average? Those are good questions. Um, so yes, the way the handbook states is that we can use, um, automatically use state labs. Um, since NDSU doesn't have one, um, we, the state committee needs to approve the labs that are, that are used. So um, kind of like I said before, we haven't seen a lot of applications yet on Forage. So we're, we're just kind of getting our feet wet on what type of labs um, producers are using in North Dakota. Um, so the state committee does need to approve those labs to, to be able to use the, that documentation for the application. Um, <clears throat> in regards to determining a county average, um, what we look at is there's, there's supposed to be five producers in a county. Um, or they can go to surrounding counties to determine that county loss. Um, if we're outside of that, we're not sure what is going to happen. Um, that's a decision that's made at the national level and not at a local or state level. So um, we're, we're not exactly sure what will happen if we don't have five producers or five producers in surrounding counties. Okay. I guess may, I may have read that question wrong. I said qual. Uh, extension for its quality formula. It says quantity formula. Uh, so, so I'm assuming that's extent, extension has a has a formula to to try calculate the forage. I guess does does that make sense? We can help. There's there's probably not so much extension, um, but there we if there's some documentation of production forage production um that are i suppose there's county and there's county level data too as far as forage okay. losses but I, I don't think we we don't have a um a forage quantity formula beyond 
those methods of estimating biomass. Right, right. right. And, and that producer would need to provide some type of documentation to support the quantity they're putting on there. So they would need to have, you know, their their bail counts, um, something, something a written document that the county committee can review to determine if that's acceptable production record or not. A uh, question about low sugar content on sugar beets. Does uh, due to due to excessive moisture, does that qualify? Sugar beets were were handled differently under WIP Plus slash QLA because they were paid out of the cooperatives. We are not including sugar beets oh. in our in the quality loss assistance program. And then um, I'm and then pro, uh, low protein wheat does not qualify either, right? As a as a as a as a quality uh, factor. Low protein wheat may qualify if it's due to one of those qualifying weather events. So if excessive moisture caused the, the low protein, then that may be a situation where if it was discounted, it would be eligible. Okay. <clears throat> Let me see, I guess I'm, okay. When getting the board price established on the date of the sale, uh, they're talking about, uh, do we use the milling quote for Durham and the 14% protein for spring wheat? Those, that's a good question. Um, we do not have all the, we don't know what we can accept or not. I guess I would encourage the producer is if you would have taken it in and you would have sold it that day and, and it wouldn't have had quality discounts, what would it have been sold for? Okay. Uh, is, star is starch in corn considered a quality loss? That one I'm not familiar with, Ron. Do you have any input? I don't know. I've never heard of it. I don't know. So I, I guess I don't know if that's an industry standard or quality or not, I have not heard of that one. Um, the producer can submit you know, the question to their county office with some documentation and we can take a look at it or they could email it to me directly. Okay, here's a situation where they had some hard red spring wheat adjusted by crop insurance at uh, five bushels an acre due to drought and then was bailed for hay due to excess of rain uh, after that. So, what do you think say about that? If they didn't have any production that was quality affected, like harvested production that was quality affected, it would not be eligible. Okay. Um, There's a few oh. questions out there on corn if it was harvested in 2020 instead of 2019. That is acceptable. We we know that that was unfortunately common practice <laughs> in North Dakota to harvest 2019 crop um, well into 2020. Um, that, that, is, that is eligible um, for, it'd be a 2019 crop. So you, you, when you're applying, you'd apply, the year of application would be 2019. Right. Uh, another question on wheat protein. Um, you mentioned that it, it would qualify. Uh, it, is, is, there a, is there a point where it qualifies at, at what protein level? Again, it's gonna be based on your dollar loss. So you'd have to have a 5% overall do dollar loss of quality. Okay. Uh, on Durham, uh, d does low hard count, um, is that a quality loss? Ron, that's the HD. It's, there's uh, hard, yeah, instead of hard amber, it's just hard. There's a HD, I believe it's called. Yeah. Yeah, if that's an, I believe that's industry standard. So yes, if there is a discount for that, and it was due to the qualifying disaster event, is why you had the loss, then you could apply on it. Uh, this is with a. Uh, is the pro, yeah I, the. Is the price before discount simply the documented sale price of the non forage crop? Yes. Okay. 
Anything up from you, Miranda? I'm going to read this one here. <clears throat> There's a few people asking where to get the where to find the continuation sheet. Uh, the continuation sheet is out on our forms website, um, and it should be out on the available when you go to farmers.gov. It should have a link to it there. If not, your local county office can provide it. Okay, here's a situation where the corn was all chopped and bagged uh, for feed in 19 because of excessive moisture and poor quality. Um, what, re uh, let me see, I don't know what records they have to go back and possibly claim the loss under the program. Um, I guess, it, 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 yeah, what, what records do you have to have for that? Why don't they, that would be one where I want them to email me that question and, and we'll do some more research on it. Okay. Ah, uh, spring wheat that was left in the field and not harvested due to low falling numbers and excess moisture. Uh, do I have an option to apply on those acres? It has not, if it, uh, I gather it has not, it did not get harvested. Right. The crop has to be harvested yep. to be eligible for QLA. And some of these questions are kind of a, the same here. Uh, we already answered some here. Uh, if the crop insurance reduces the bushels to qualify, we do, do we use, uh, can we use the actual production or, or the, or will the bushels be reduced or disqualified? I, let me read that again. If, if crop insurance reduces the bushels due to quality, which they do, then okay. can we use the actual production or will the bushels reduced be disqualified uh, for this program? For this program, you're gonna use your harvested bushels. The harvested. So what you actually sold right. or what is in the bin is what you're gonna apply on. And then you'd need to have your verifiable quality factors um, for that quantity. There's um, several questions on, you know, if it was fed to livestock instead, instead of sold because of the quality and how, how does that work? Again, for those, they're, they're going to need to have some verifi verifiable evidence of what the quality was. So if crop insurance had come out, um, done a loss adjustment, sent, took a sample and sent it in, um, they need the copy of what that, um, those quality factors were. And then they're going to certify to the quantity um, and be able to support that quantity that they're applying or that they're certifying to on the application. So they're gonna have the quantity that they fed um, and then have the verifiable quality factors of that quantity. And then they're gonna be paid based on the county average and that applicable 50%, additional 50% reduction in the payment. Uh, is the affected production calculated by FSA farm number? It's by everything, right? Ask that question again. Uh, is the affected production calculated by FSA farm number? No, the affected production is by physical location. The physical location. And physical here's county location. Okay, here's a question that I wanted to get at here. They had low falling numbers on their wheat in, in 2019. The crop, insur uh, crop insurance agency did give, they got a payment from crop insurance and, and have documented the low falling numbers later was able to blend this low quality wheat um, with the high, with a higher quality wheat the next year and sell it. But they, when they sold it, the grain elevator, you know, there was no document, you know, the, the, they had a, a price then, uh, they don't have a discount amount from the elevator because it was all blended. If they don't show that they have a dollar loss, then they're not eligible for the program. Okay, even though they, even though it, it was documented by crop insurance? Correct, because they don't, if they've sold the crop and they didn't have a dollar value loss, they're not eligible. Okay. So it does look like we are out of time. Yeah. We will make sure to save the questions, but, and, I, and maybe we can figure out a way to address some of these more popular ones, but 
if you need and if to, not if yeah. Miranda if, if if their question wasn't answered um we'd like you to reach out to your county office um and they should be able to answer your questions for you um otherwise my contact information was included in the slides Well, with that, I guess we'll have to cut it off here. We appreciate the, the great attendance, and we hope we you've helped we've helped you out in uh, in this new program. Uh, and and there's a lot of questions about uh, state FSA is very good at eventually get every, getting everything answered for you, and and uh, work with your local office, and they're always good to work with, and and we'll get this figured out. What was the sign up deadline again? Um, March March fifth. Uh, March fifth, which is coming yep. up pretty quick here. So. It is. It is. Thank you again, Ron and Miranda and all of NDSU for helping us get this information out. We really appreciate it. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye.